Hello people, in this video let us look at the steps of mediolateral episiotomy. Mediolateral is the most uh, commonly done uh, type, right? So this is the mediolateral. So this is median and this is uh, from there it's coming lateral. It is going to be 2 cm away from the anus, right? So this is the most common episiotomy. You can do it either on the right side or on the left side. Here they have shown it on the right side. See, this is right and this is left. So they have divided it as uh, preliminaries where you will give uh, povidon iodine, you will paint it and then you will give some local anesthesia. Then you will do incision. How to do the incision? Incision, what are the structures that are cut and finally how will you suture it? Okay, that's what you have, we have to look at. Till now what have we looked at? Do you remember what we have looked at so far? Let's take a recap of what we have seen so far. We started off with episiotomy or perineotomy. It is the cut on the vulva or the perineum. So basically this is a surgically planned incision in uh, on the perineum and the posterior vagina wall during the second stage of labor. This is a second degree perineal injury, it's the most common obstetric operation. Why are you doing this? So that um, uh, there will be a, uh, a vaginal opening will be large enough. So there will be safe and easy delivery of the fetus, there will be reduced stress on the, uh, and strain on the fetus head. You will also for the mother, minimize the overstretching and rupture of the perineal muscles and fascia. So this will, uh, what and all, how will it help the mother? It will help the mother by giving it, um, it a controlled incision is better than the lacerated wound, isn't it? And uh, uh, you are going to reduce the stage of the labor. Second stage of labor, the time will reduce. You will also reduce the trauma to the pelvic floor muscles. So there will be less incidence of uterine prolapse or a urinary incontinence. Okay. For the fetus, what are the help? Uh, it will help give it an easy birth like you saw then. Uh, intracranial injuries will be reduced because there will be reduced stress and strain on the fetal head. Indications guys, we saw the indications. An inelastic rigid perineum could, could be in an older woman who is a primary uh, primary gravida. When you are anticipating, uh, anticipating a perineal tear, that is the baby is going to be a big baby or a shoulder dystocia or a breech delivery you are expecting or a face to pubis delivery, that is face presentation kind of a thing, but the face is towards the pubis. So in those uh, cases, you may need a, there may be a perineal tear, anticipating that you will give an episiotomy. Or if you want to use some uh, manipulations like forceps or vacuum delivery for that, you can do a episiotomy. And uh, previous perineal surgery, see one thing we'll add here is that whenever there is a forceps or a ventose delivery, you want to do some manipulation at the time, medial lateral is better than median. That's why what you're learning now is also what? Medial lateral episiotomy. So what are we looking at guys? Medial lateral episiotomy. It is better for all these uh, vacuum and forceps and so on looks like. And then if there is a previous perineal surgery, you have repaired that lady's pelvic floor and you have reconstructed her perineum. Do you want to put so much stress? No, you would rather choose an episiotomy. Okay, the common indications will be a threatened perineal injury. Okay, and then a rigid, rigid perineum. Then what and all you saw, timing of the episiotomy, you will do it just prior to the crowning in the second stage of labor. That is because in this, uh, what would have happened, there will be thinned perineum during contraction. So the blood loss will be less, but if before this if you do, blood loss will be more. And uh, in case you are doing it uh, after all this um, stage, you missed this chance and you are doing a late episiotomy, then that's a waste because all the lacerations would have happened uh, and uh, you, you will basically, the whole point of doing episiotomy will be wasted, right? So here you can see in this photo that the baby's head is crowning, before that itself they have to give a, this is a medial, we are not doing that. We are doing a medial lateral, right? Episiotomy. In the second stage of labor. Then episiotomy types you have seen medial lateral, median lateral, J shaped. And you saw that uh, median versus medial lateral. You saw what is done is more is medial lateral because you will have little chance of rectum injury and um, you can extend the incision. So that's why they prefer medial lateral. And also somewhere they said that you can also use the manipulative obstetrics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's get started with the steps of uh, medial lateral episiotomy. So let's look at the preliminaries. So here what will you do? You'll use povidon iodine, right? That is for creating a sterile environment. Then local anesthesia, you're going to talk about 1% um, solution of lignocaine. And how much of it you're going to give? 10 ml, okay? So antiseptic povidon iodine, local anesthesia, you're giving 10% Sorry, 10 ml, 1% solution of lignocaine. Okay. So, let's look at the image here. So, they are taking the syringe and they are giving it in three directions, is it? And then they are doing the mediolateral episiotomy. Look at this. 
steps of medial lateral episiotomy perineal infiltration you are doing perineal infiltration and cutting the perineum okay now complications of forceps why have i have written this in that case they are giving the block in a different way is it let us see this methods of labial perineal block for episiotomy during outlet forceps or ventos operation see when they are doing some manipulation they seem to be giving the anesthesia the block in a different direction see they are giving like this okay now we are moving on to the incision see guys they are telling the two fingers are placed in the vagina between the presenting part and the posterior vaginal wall can you see two fingers see um, uh, presenting part here they have shown the head right of the baby so that's the presenting part so you will place two fingers in the vagina between the presenting part and the posterior vaginal wall okay two fingers i'm seeing one finger is inside then an incision is made by a curved or straight blunt uh, sharp pointed sharp scissors or you can use a scalpel here they are using a scissors look at this guys <clears throat> you know when to make the incision right you will make it at the just before the crowning whenever there is a contraction the perineum will be very thin so you will make it at the height of the uterine contraction do not forget this if you just say second stage of labor before crowning all that doesn't make sense you should also add that at the height of the contraction whenever the contraction is more at that time the perineum will be very thin that time you are going to cut right then so you're going to start where the cut you're going to start it at the center of the forehead where is this forehead you've heard it many times in this photo is not very clear but anyways look at this this point is the forehead four f o u r four chet okay forehead so at the center of this they are going to start the incision okay and uh, see that seems to be here there's at the center they are starting the incision and they are going either right or left okay that's what they are trying to say here so that's how you do it extending laterally either to the right or the left it is directed diagonally in a straight line which runs about 2.5 cm away from the anus this is something that you have to mention how what is the distance 2.5 cm away from the anus this is why you are doing it right you want to avoid any um, uh, problem to the rectum or anus you can extend this also so that is why this is better you, uh, in the medial incision you cannot extend why because the rectum anus in, is in the way so this one is good you are going 2.5 cm away from the anus okay the incision ought to be adequate to serve the purpose look at the structures that are cut guys you're cutting the see it's a scissors okay so first of all if you are it's a scissors your one nick will be here and one nick will be here right you will have inside also one cut will be there outside also one cut will be there right so inside i'm representing like this but actually inside it will be something like this isn't it with a scissors if you're cutting inside like this you would have cut and outside you would have cut like this so anyways we will draw it like this this is how they have drawn it so inside you have cut the uh, vaginal mucosa uh, uh, submucosal tissue etc outside you would have cut the skin and subcutaneous tissue and under it some some muscles will be there first you have to cut the fascia of those muscles and then uh, you will cut the muscles which muscles will you cut you will cut the bulbospongiosis then you will cut the uh, transverse pair and superficial perineal muscles and they also talked about the levator ani getting cut okay Uh, then in this process some vessels and some nerves also can get cut that is those are the pudendal vessels and pudendal nerves okay here they have shown the pudendal vessels and pudendal nerves on both sides they didn't show the nerves but nerves are there on both sides and arteries are also there on both sides okay so the structures cut will be posterior vaginal wall then the skin and the subcutaneous tissue fascia covering the muscles and these uh, pudendal vessels and nerves and these muscles that is the superficial and deep transverse perineal muscles bulbospongiosus and part of levator ani so what i am thinking is this is what i will put as a separate thing and this i will put separately okay so you are cutting uh, with a scissors right so you should understand inside you are cutting the posterior vaginal wall outside you are cutting the skin subcutaneous tissue and some muscles okay so now let us go to the uh, okay this is the episiotomy scissors bush scissors you can also use a long straight scissors they are saying now we have to go to the repair okay now look at the episiotomy we have reached the third uh, uh, step of peri uh, episiotomy guys this is the repair they are showing you see here you can understand that they are showing it as a continuous line here so this part of it vaginal mucosa and uh, vaginal uh, the uh, submucous tissue this side muscles you can see so how they will suture is three layer um, uh, repair it is 
So first, this uh, vaginal mucosa is uh, uh, sutured, then the muscles are sutured. As you can see here, the muscles, here the vaginal mucosa, then they are suturing the vessels. Sorry, what am I saying? Muscles. And then they are closing the skin here. So three level closure, three level repair. So this will help in achieving homeostasis. Okay. And you should understand, when are you going to do the repair? After the placenta is out, right? After the third stage of labor, you are going to suture it. So if you suture it early, that is at this stage we are telling you that after the delivery of the placenta, you can prevent sepsis, etc. Why not suture it after the baby is out? Why wait for placenta? Because in case you have to do some other manipulation, then it is better uh, not to cause uh, uh, again injury, right? Because there will be a wound. So better wait for the placenta to come out and then you will suture. Okay, what suture you are doing? You are doing it in three layers, three layer suture. So you will uh, stitch the vaginal mucosa and the submucosal tissue and this side uh, here you are suturing the muscle and the uh, skin. Okay, three layers. Vaginal mucosa, we will show it to you. Read this content guys. So uh, first of all, when are you going to do the repair? Soon after the expulsion of the placenta, you are going to do this. If you do the, it um, before the expulsion of placenta, if you possibly need to do any manual removal or exploration, then you will disrupt the wound that you have uh, stitched. Okay, so there is no point. So wait for the expulsion of the placenta and then you will do the episiotomy repair. Okay, then. Where are we? Here. So... You will put the patient in lithotomy position. If you want, you can mention this. And then you will use a good light source from behind. Uh, then you will uh, cleanse with antiseptic solution. In case there is blood from vagina, you will just keep a... Uh, what is there? It's there here somewhere. You will keep a vaginal pack so that uh, your uh, field of uh, view should not get obscured. Then you have to remove this pack. Okay. And then what are they saying? You will do a three-layer repair. So how will the three-layer repair help? It will help in homeostasis, obliterate the dead space and suture without tension. So how will it help guys? Three layer suture, you will have perfect homeostasis. You will obliterate the dead space and suture without tension. The How will you do the three layer repair? Vaginal mucosa and submucosal tissues are the first you will do. Then you will do the perineal muscles and then the skin and subcutaneous tissues. Okay. So how will you suture the vaginal mu mucosa? That also they are telling you. So look at the photo here. If you look at the photo here, you will understand how they are doing it. So, you at the apex, okay, the, first of all, you will oppose the vaginal walls. First suture you will place here, then you will oppose the vaginal walls, okay, with polyglycolic acid suture, that is Dexon or no, uh, sorry, number zero chromic cat gut. So, you understood guys, first they are placing a suture here and then they are, uh, uh, post, uh, the vaginal walls are opposed, then you are suturing using some uh, zero chromic cat cut or dexon and then from above downwards till you reach the fauchet. So now they have reached the fauchet. Okay, what have they written here? The suture should include the deep tissues to obliterate the dead space. You should include the deep tissues. Okay, a continuous suture may cause puckering. So what are they use, doing? They are using interrupted sutures. So this is kind of a strange thing. Interrupted sutures. Continuous suture they are not doing. Okay. They want to do what? Interrupted sutures. Interrupted sutures are what they want to do. Okay. If you do continuous suture, there could be puckering or shortening of the posterior vaginal wall. And you should always take care to not injure the rectum. That is the whole procedure, whole intention of doing a medial lateral episiotomy. Okay. So people, after uh, suturing this vaginal mucosa, you will suture the muscles and then the skin and subcutaneous tissue. So this is the three layer fix. Okay. Uh, you can use the Ali tissue, Ali's tissue forceps to hold the apex of the episiotomy during wound repair. Okay. Ali's tissue forceps you can use to hold the apex. Okay. Now let's come to post-operative care, guys. How will you take care of the wound? Guys, we have moved to post-operative care of episiotomy. Focus. Okay. So basically here they are saying how will you do the dressing, how to relieve the pain and you should ask the patient to move ambulance then removal of stitches. So basically dressing the wound is to be dressed each time following urination and defecation to keep the area clean. So the best way to do it using povidon iodine, right? Povidon iodine you will use to clean it. After every time you urinate, defecate etc. 
comfort how will you relieve the pain magnesium sulfate compression or infrared heat interesting do you need so much ice packs reduce the swelling and pain analgesic drugs like ibuprofen may be required so i'm thinking um, as such i'm not sure just for the episiotomy if they're giving pain killer or the entire process of labor but anyways ambulance the patient is allowed to move out of bed after 24 hours okay prior to that she has to just roll over on her side okay or even sit but only with thighs opposed removal of stitches when uh, removal of stitches when will you remove the stitches guys do you need to remove if it is uh, chromic catgut or dexon you need not remove the sutures at all right these are all absorbable right a dexon which they told or a chromic catgut this are absorbable you need not remove at all but if you are using some other suture then you may have to remove when the wound is sutured by catgut or dexon which will be absorbed sutures need not be removed okay but if you are using non absorbable then you can cut them on the sixth day okay anyways we are not talking about those complications what are the complications of episiotomy so can episiotomy cause problem also so complications of episiotomy they have given they have given the complications as um, immediate and uh, remote guys in immediate look at this extension of the incision to involve the rectum so um, where's your uh, anal opening here so it can happen that the incision that you are doing can extend where is the here so in, you can possibly injure the anus right or there could be a vulval hematoma so there's hematoma here vulval hematoma or there can be infection so you know the signs of infection and you will have to treat it with what um, uh, you will have to drain the pus or you will have to give some magnesium sulfate compression you will have to give painkillers you will have to give some antibiotics etc wound dehiscence the wound is the kind of opening up is it so basically you will have to re-suture it possibly if required and um, like we told you there could be sphincter injury anal sphincter injury right that can cause incontinence right then there can be a recto vaginal fistula just imagine there is a fistula between the vagina and the rectum there could be a fistula or there could be necrotizing fasciitis which can be caused by streptococcus flesh eating bacteria especially in immunocompromised or diabetic people this can happen guys so necrotizing fasciitis okay those are the immediate complications so remote complications can be dyspareunia that is um, uh, painful uh, sexual intercourse or there can be a perineal laceration in subsequent labor or there can be scar endometriosis that is the presence of endometrium outside the uterus right scar endometriosis can happen because of episiotomy okay so that those are the complications then that's it guys we have looked at in complete detail about episiotomy so we have looked at uh, what it is the definition then we have looked at the objectives the advantages the indications the timing of the episiotomy the timing of repair also the types of episiotomy the advantages and we have looked at the scissors that they are using we have looked at the steps of medial lateral episiotomy preliminarily we saw that you have to use antiseptic local anesthesia then you will use um, uh, you will do the incision how will you do the incision where where will you start where will you end and then uh, what are the structures that are cut you have seen right and then you have seen uh, the repair also how it is done three layer repair right interrupted sutures you will put then you saw post operative care how to take care of the patient uh, how the, you should teach the patient to take care of it and complications of episiotomy also you have looked at that's it for now in this video bye bye